to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. On the show today, I have Debbie Daly. Debbie is an interior designer in the New England area, and she's also an installed designer in the Boston Design Center's Designer On Call program, which they now have renamed Design Services. Okay, this is a really interesting program that the Boston Design Center runs. And if you're not familiar with it, please go back and listen to episode number 319 with Kristen McLaughlin. She is the director of the Boston Design Center center. And in addition to telling us about the other things that she oversees at the Boston Design Center, she gave us a great description of this designer services program. It's really pretty innovative. And um, I think if you listen to it, you might approach your design center and ask if they might start a program like it. So go back and listen to 319. Now, Debbie built her interior design firm after she got her business degree, and she detoured a little while she owned her own workroom because she, uh, get this, taught herself how to sew custom window treatments. That's not so easy, I'm just going to tell you. (laughs) All right. In addition to spending time in the window treatment industry, Debbie has literally spent time doing hands-on work in several industries within ours, paint, wallpaper, and the furniture industry. Always accomplishing two things in these detours, gaining valuable knowledge and expanding her industry network of friends and colleagues. And some 30 years later, Debbie is well-respected, and she's often invited to speak at industry conferences. She also writes a weekly lifestyle column for the Lowell Sun, offering design, travel, DIY, and cooking topics. And today, she tells us how she is writing her first book, which is due out this fall, 2019. Now, we also talked today about a two-day seminar that Debbie is running in June 2019. So it's coming up very quickly. It's in Portsmouth for you interior designers covering business topics. So take a listen. Make sure you hear that if you're in the area and like to take a, take a part of it. All right. Then... Then we spend time talking about how she handles her initial consult with her clients, how she puts certain items in a folder, what she provides them, and it's a very good practical conversation. Like, do this, then do this, and do this. I think it's. I think you're going to enjoy it. All right. Now, you know what else is very practical, and I think you're going to enjoy Article.com. Right? Have you opened your trade account yet at Article.com? If not, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Go to Well designed.article.com today. And when you do and you sign up for your trade account, you are going to find that their trade team is staffed and led by interior designers. Yes. Imagine being able to speak with account reps who actually understand the job you do. All right. They know the importance of finding just the right detail, the right color, and the right piece of furniture so that the project is perfect right? Open your trade account today at welldesigned.article.com. Please remember to use this URL so that they know that you heard about them from me. I want to be sure they know I'm delivering on the value that I say that I bring, just like you do when you work with your clients, okay? So that's welldesigned.article.com. All righty, looking forward to introducing you to Debbie. Hi, Deb. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am too, and I'm glad that we got it together to do this. And I was happy to meet you in real life at the Boston Design Center recently on that big snowstorm day. 
Yes. Hopefully right? you made it out on time. I did. I did. I had to switch from a plane train to an automobile, everything else, <laughs> but I got home. <laughs> okay. um, that was a nice event. A big shout out to the Boston Design Center, Kristen McLaughlin, and also to Waterworks. And I thank both of them for hosting all of us that day. It was awesome. It was an awesome Yeah, event, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Deb, this is the thing. My head's spinning. You have 9,000 things I could talk about here today. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. So, um, you have a book coming out that is called uh, monetizing your passion, turning design, your design hobby into a career. Okay, we could talk about that. We could talk about how you are one of the Boston Design Center's designer on call. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if when I say that, go back and listen to episode 319 with Kristen McLaughlin, who is the director of the Boston Design Center, and she talked all about this designer on call system. So you got to go back and listen to it because we have too much to talk about with Debbie. We cannot repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Debbie is great friends with my friend, Wendy Glaster. And Wendy was on the show, episode 386, and they have a, uh, developed an ASID, ASID CEU course called Turning Interior Design Challenges into Opportunities, where they present to the industry on how when you have problems with your vendors and your contractors and, and what you do. So you can see, I could go into that. We're not going into that. Hang on to your hats, folks. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that Debbie does is that she teaches a course. It's a five-day course decoration and interior design course um, and she teaches this course to the non-design professional who is hoping to be a design professional and I'm sure there's probably some of my baby designers in that course too but it's five days she does a studio day she does field trips she does a trip to the design center she takes them to a loft where she teaches them how to measure and do floor plans it's insane I still haven't gotten to what we're going to talk about is this crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know add to that a 30-year career in design making custom window treatments back in the beginning like I don't know so but here's what we settled on if you can believe it what we settled on is that Debbie also runs a two-day workshop that is toward the industry that is geared to you as the interior design professional and it's called design for today and it has um, some very specific components that she covers in this course and the course she gives it live there's going to be one coming up in in Connecticut or Massachusetts no, soon? it's going to be in actually Portsmouth New Hampshire oh okay uh, June 27th and 28th okay Portsmouth New Hampshire June 27 and 28. Okay. And if you want information, you may as well tell them now before I forget. <laughs> yeah, it is on our website. Uh, they can go to dailydesigns.com. And it's actually, I believe it's on the homepage. Okay. And it's D-A-L-E-Y. D -A -L -E -Y. D yep. D-A-L-E-Y. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So... Let's talk about this. So for all of the people who are living in the 120 countries to this podcast that aren't going to be able to go to Portsmouth, <laughs> tell us, give us the overview of what you teach in that course, and then let me break it apart a little bit. So first, tell us the, the highlights, the, 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 the okay. areas that you cover, Deb. So Design for Today is a two-day design industry workshop. And what is covered is e-design and other online floor plan platforms and how to use them. So that is a hands-on, um, the hands-on uh, section of, uh, segment of the workshop where a laptop is required. Okay. Because, okay, so that's number one. Um, number two is packaging your design services. Okay. And in all these years of my career, I have never packaged my design services until I hired Fred Burns, <laughs> <laughs> and he pushed me. Shout out um, to Fred Burns. I didn't realize doing, that was coming. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Fred did my, my professional bio, and he did a whole analysis on my website, and he was just wonderful. Um, <clears throat> basically, a two months of conversation, but <laughs> getting me to raise my rates and um, establish some design packages, which will be going live on my new website, which will be live at uh, the end of next week. And so um, we're talking about that, packaging your design services and selling your professional services. Okay. So what happens when you do package them and you do raise your rates and, and then how do you sell that? 
Okay. So we all have that fear that we're not going to get any more business once we do that. And we all um, know we get more business at more money. I know, <laughs> and it's already proven to me like two weeks ago. So I was like, um, and then we're going to talk about uh, the furniture industry and where that's heading uh, today because we all know there's a lot of changes with the furniture industry and there's a lot of concerns okay. and, um, I can elaborate, I can elaborate on each point. Right. I, I'll go back to them. I want to hear okay. all of them first. Buying furniture and accessories and opening accounts. Okay. Performance fabrics and where the textile industry is heading. Okay. And then we have a resources, um, kind of a resource chat. And we we'll provide you with some resources as well. And uh, vendor field trips. So we probably have two vendor field trips that will be included in this workshop. And morning breaks and coffee and pastry and lunch and all that stuff will be, will be served. That's amazing. Okay, so let's go back and take some of these things apart. So here to recap, we've got the e-design and online floor plan platforms. We have packaging your design services. We have selling your professional services. We have the furnace, furniture industry discussion where it's heading. We have um, buying fr accessories, furniture, setting up vendor accounts, the textile industry where that's heading, and the resources and field trips. Okay, so here's where we're at. So it's a two-day thing. This is for professionals. This is for people in the interior design industry. So in other words, when we say professionals, we just mean they are practicing interior design. Designers, right? Yes, and they that is have, correct. you know, a business license and they're grown up businesses, whether they're in business a minute or a, a 20 years, that's not relevant, but they're actual LLCs or sole proprietors, but they have their resale numbers and all of that, right? That is correct. Yes. Okay, good. Because we yes. want that all in the same room, right? We're not going to sit here and talk exactly. about sources and vendors and setting up accounts with people who are uh, are still, you know, aspiring. Maybe they're going to be, but they're not yet. And this is for industry. That is correct. Okay. Love it. Okay. Love it. Okay. So when we talk about e-design and online floor plan pa platforms, that to me is almost two different things. Are you talking about executing e-design for consumer facing projects or are you talking about how to do floor plans online and the different platforms and maybe apps or, you know, I'm going to say words that I don't know what they mean, but I've heard on the show Revit and SketchUp <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, this workshop was developed because it, it was a request from some of my seasoned colleagues that I have been in another design association with, um, Association of Design Education. And this actually just came within the last month. They're like, you know so much. Can you just share with us? And I, I was out to um, having cocktails with a, a, one of these colleagues. And she's like, oh, my gosh, you're writing that book. And and because I'm in we'll go back to that part of it. But um, she said, can you share some of your knowledge? We're all so busy. And I find this with myself that we're all so busy doing our job that sometimes the world passes us by, mm. right? And the world passes us by in our own industry. So these I'm going to call them women. Um, there might be one gentleman, but uh, they want to know, like, the e-design, how do we do it, or can we do it, or can we use it in our business but not actually physically put it out there? And and that's what I do, Luann, is I use, I, I don't want to call it e-design because I do use it as a platform for one of my packages for clients that I they might be existing clients or new clients or even some of my high-end clients that are really busy and they can't make the meeting or I'll put it on a mood board for them through that platform and I'll itemize everything for them. And so these, some, some designers in the industry don't know how to do that. Or they what don't platform know what are you using to do that? So I'm using design files. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's easy to use. I don't put it out there live. I'm not selling my services on eDesign. Um, as of yet, my schedule doesn't allow me to do that. I mean, and I do have a junior designer, but I actually have her out in, in, in homes as well with jobs. So okay. um, we use it as a visual for our clients. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for software software platforms that they can use within their business to enhance their business to make their life a little bit more easier. You know so, I have to ask the obvious here, right? I mean, you know what I'm going to ask you. 
<laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Isn't this exactly what my Doma Studio does? I haven't researched my Doma Studio okay, yet. Okay, that's it. It's done. I can't do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. No, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that is exactly yes. what my Doma <laughs> Studio does. Exactly. See, now you're with the program. So, so, so. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm joking and I'm not joking, by the way, right? Um, so I've not heard of design files. And so this is a new one for me. And that's awesome because you know what? Look, you know that I prefer my Doma studio that I believe in it but it this is a place where you are to come and get information because what one platform is right for somebody might not be right for another somebody okay yeah oh I can add my Doma studio I'll research that I have time all righty I appreciate that but the thing is for my and because design files is new for me I'll run by you a couple of features of my Doma studio that sound like you can get there so of course you can create your mood boards there you can create your packages there your client can approve it you can make your mood board you can put this chair this pattern yes. this color and then the client can just click and approve and purchase through the cart it's done yes okay and so what you're saying is is that you're using so design files sounds like to me is this a platform that is designed to do e-design like that's exactly yes. what its sole purpose in life is and that you use it personally in your firm not to attract and do e-design per se but you use it as a tool for when you can't meet with a client because the client has 16 meetings and my goodness we need to make some approval so let me send it to you via this is that what you're saying that is correct okay okay that so is correct so here's the thing I just say to you and anyone else listening that all of that can happen with my Doma studio please Plus, you can also then further manage your vendors, your contracts, all of your product and your hours, time tracking, all of that within the same platform. So it's sort of what you're using and more robust and more comprehensive. But yes. okay, so I'm happy to learn something new and love it. And I love this concept of, you know, what, you, what you're saying is opening eyes to your colleagues in the industry that even though it's like it's like saying that even though you have a BMW and it can go 100 miles an hour, you can drive it at 60 miles, around, miles an hour all day long. It's fine. And so that's what you're saying with design, with design files. Yes. It's designed to do all this, but use this part of it because it's valuable. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So then, and what the thing is, it sounds like there's a learning curve in there because you can do floor plans and things in there. And it's a matter of a being aware of the tool, but B having some, you know, this workshop time where you get their feet wet in the tool and you let them understand this is how you work your way around it. And then of course, you're not going to learn it in, in a workshop, one hour, two hour presentation, since you've got a lot to, to teach them in these two days, but Correct. they get their feet wet, right? Right. Love it. I love it. Okay. So that's really cool. I love that. And so are you finding that when you do the, um, is this the first time you're going to run this the is, workshop? Yes. Okay. This is going to, this, this came out of, um, a happy hour conversation <laughs> and that's the next great. day getting, um, a few Facebook messages from other colleagues that were all on our same little group here. Like, can you please develop something for us to learn from you? That's amazing. And, um, it was great because I also spoke at the conference, um, and Fred Burns was there. Actually, we were both speaking at the Association of De Design Education in September, and I did a whole presentation on um, – People have known me for a very long time, and, and it's interesting because someone came up to me after my presentation because the presentation was all about um, how I started. People wanted to know how I got started, and mm. that's what I was asked to talk about. And and I did, and I did a whole PowerPoint presentation, and some people had tears in their eyes, and even the, wow. the gentleman who came up to me said, you know, I know who you are, and I've seen you at different conferences, but I've never really thought that you were this approachable, wow. which made, made me think twice about myself. Because... Yes, isn't that funny? That's like a positive and a negative statement, isn't it? Yeah, yes. and I felt, I, I, my heart sank. I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's like, no, no, it's a good thing. And, and so that's where... The book has, I've been planning this book for a while, but that really got me going in the right direction and giving me motivation to do that. But then the workshop, when after that whole conference, people were reaching out to me about, can you teach us what you know? Mm. And so that's where I said, 
you know, one of them suggested, let's do a two-day workshop because we love coming to Portsmouth. We can stay in the hotel. We can do a little. I said, well, let me just research this a little bit to keep the cost down. <laughs> Give me a minute. You know, <laughs> I know. So I am meeting with, um, you know, the hotel this afternoon and, and to Great. kind of look at all that. But it's it's really important, I think, Luann, even for me, um, it's not a competitive thing because there's so much work out there for everyone mm-hmm. that... At this point, I think sharing the knowledge is very important because all of us have different clientele and um, we need to know how to sell to the, 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 the masses even. We need to know how to sell our professional design services, how the world has changed. It's not the same as it was 20 years ago. And some of these have been in the, these people have been in the industry for even say 10, 15 years right. and haven't kept up with what's happening. Right. So that's where this whole workshop comes into play. Okay. I love it. And so when we talk about the, you know, packaging your design services and selling your pre- professional services, mm-hmm. what are some of the tips and some of the lessons and the ahas that you have learned um, from Fred Burns and from doing it? Well, coming from Fred, um, which it's he's a great person (laughs) he's like a walking encyclopedia the business encyclopedia of interior design i know he's awesome gives you so much confidence (laughs) (laughs) so he's like all right debbie enough with like the hourly rate just go to packages i'm like yeah but you know i do have those clients that you know they just want that i i don't do the one hour anymore we don't do anything less than two hours and so he's like you need to package that so he basically gave me an outline and he's like, you need to categorize what you're, what you're doing now, put them in the outline and put a price on them. And so really think about your time, the amount of um, time you've invested in this industry and what you have to offer. And people are going to pay for your knowledge. And so I took that and it took me a while to develop these packages. They're my initial um initial packages. Um, I was just speaking to da- Dalla Powell about this um, a few days ago. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I think I have to do that. So, um, and it, Darla it, is uh, Darla Powell Interiors. She's been on the show twice and she's also uh, running Wingnut Social for interior designers yeah. doing their social media campaigns and strategies. So that's a shout out to Darla. Hey. Hey, <laughs> and the awesome. soulless ginger. The soulless ginger. Oh my god! I had this cocktail. We at cocktail hour. I had a soulful ginger. It was called, and it was a, a drink. And I sent it. I texted it to Natalie. Uh-huh. Like, oh, gosh, so this bizarre. is ironic. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, because she likes whiskey. Yes. So we, but anyway, um, so you know, Fred gave me that. Um, little piece of information, and I pondered over it. And I'll tell you, it's been. The end of December, um, we spoke through January. I think I bit the bullet in the middle of February and de- developed my packages. It took me all that time of pondering and mm-hmm. um, sweaty palms and, you know, am I never going to get a call again um, because I'm developing these packages and putting a price on them. And then he said, you know, put them on your website. And that I was like, oh, I'm going to put my prices on my website. Um but you know what? It does weed out the people. It lets people know what to expect. Right. There's so a big it, debate about that. I have. I know Fred is a, a big proponent of making the packages and putting it on your website. And then I have conversations with people who don't like the idea of packages at all. Then I have conversations with people that like the idea of packages but don't like it. the pricing on the website. And um, you're finding, though, that it has been beneficial. Are you selling more? Are you doing more business? What's your result on, on changing this? I mean, you're going to teach your understanding and your learnings of it in this upcoming workshop. So what's your yes. evaluation of it? So my evaluation is my phone is ringing because I do have a package on there that's $500 for a two hour consultation. And it just includes a walkthrough and a list of suggestions provided to the client uh, before, before the conclusion of the consultation. And um, that gets emailed to them before I leave. And they can implement that themselves. So there's a safety net there for me. Okay, okay so, so let's work. Let's walk through that. So it's five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's five hundred dollars, and, and that you is tell for... them that you're going to come to the house. It's for what? How long? 
Two hours. Two hours. Mm -hmm. Before they get there, before you get there, are you giving any type of questionnaire so that you have some information or are you walking in cold? I am walking in cold and I'll give you an example. I got a new call yesterday and um, her and her husband bought a new sofa and they have a living room and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what else to do with it. So I started to talk to her about the my services and how they found me was the first question because I always ask, yes. ask that question. And she's like, we researched other designers and we saw your website and we really think that your style you know, speaks to us mm. for our home. So that was a plus and you know, I went through the different, I listened to what she said about buying a sofa, but they are heading towards, you know, retirement. They are staying in this home. So they want to put a little bit more money into their house. So I did suggest the initial consultation to them. Okay. And that way it, it kind of whets the appetite a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that includes the walkthrough and viewing of the spaces, a listing of design ideas and suggestions that are provided to the client before the conclusion of the consult. And the idea implementation, implementation however, comes by the client. They, they can implement those ideas. Okay. And if, if they want additional consult time, then they can purchase that at an hourly rate. Okay, so... You're having your conversation. You're getting a handle on what's needed. They've already seen that it's $500 for this two hour. But in your evaluation, you're like, I think this is would be good for you. And I think you get a lot of value from it. Would you like to set up the two hour consultation? And they say, yes, thank you. You yes. take a credit card before you go. They pay before you, you get there. I will send them. Yes, I will send them an invoice and they can pay for that online. Okay. And so I do then that to the accounting system. Okay. Yes. And so then you get to the house and you walk through. So you don't care if you go in one room or you go in four rooms, you're going to be there for two hours or do you establish parameters? It's X, Y, Z room or rooms. No, um, it's interesting because she did say, what if we finish the living room? Can we look at the other room? I said, my time is yours for two hours while right. I'm there. And, and of course it gives you context too, to see not, you know, to, you know, even if it's just a quick tour, um, to give the context of the type of quality they're accustomed to, right? Cause if you're looking at an empty living room with one sofa in it, you know, are these, you know, Bob's big boy furniture or are these, right. you know, right. Okay. So I like that. And then you've mentioned that you, they get their suggestions by email before you leave. So yeah. are you entering this into an iPad? Like what, yes. what does that format look like? So I have my letterhead already set up and it's basically free form. So it's, it's, you know, their name, their address, the date, the consult notes, and I go room by room by room and everything is just described that we talk about as we go room by room by room, even including paint color. Now, so, are you writing that as you're working through the rooms or are you taking yes. notes and then you sit down in, in their kitchen and no. write it up formally? No, because years ago, I would go do a consult and come home and spend three hours on my laptop right. past dinner. No, no, no. I stopped that many, many, many years ago. I take my Surface with me. I have my form up. I already, I kind of preset it up before I get there. Um, and then I just type as I go. Okay, and so you can out... type good, not like me, two fingers. Okay. Well, I was my first major was business. Okay, <laughs> then I was a, I, I was a star type on the typewriter. The select... <laughs> I forget what that was. The select. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, um, no. So and they love it because they hear the ding into their email box before I leave. And, and how, so, so you're not overthinking this, you're, you're doing stream of consciousness, you're not, like, the, like, I can understand it, when you go back and you do it in your own studio or office space or kitchen table, you're going to sit there and you're going to revise a sentence, you're going to move that to the top, you're going to move this no. to the bottom, but there you're doing it stream of consciousness, I'm standing in the kitchen, you should change the hardware, my suggestion is that it be brass, you should, you know, yes. take those stupid dried flowers that have been there for 50 years down, Correct. Like, like, that's what you're doing. Yep, bullet points. Ah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, and they love it. And I'll tell you, I have a longtime client that whenever she wanted to do a new room, she would call me. I do a consult. I give her her list. And at, oh, no, actually, you know what? We started out writing because I had a two-part form at that time. Um, she was my 
like 2003, but I had a two-part form and I would give them the top copy. I would write it all out. Right. I would give them the top cop copy, keep this, the um, carbon copy in their folder in case they had any questions. She would go shopping. That was like Bible to her. Right, right, And right, even right. when I have one for a pain consult. So because my older, some of my older clients aren't online or they don't use email mm -hmm. and I still have my backup of my two part form. So I have a paint consult form. I write the paint color down. I cut out a snip. I give it to them before I leave. They're great. They give it to their painter. The painter takes the listing. Now it has, it's on my, it's a letterhead type form, but there are lines on it for the different rooms. So I'll oh. say, you know, and so that's a hard copy for a different clientele. Um, but generally, I haven't done one of those for a long time, okay. but I do have it for the older clients because quite honestly, Luann, I do have clients that are in their 80s and they want to refresh. Right, right, right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I love this. What I love that is that it is truly $500 clean. Like yep. there's no yep. follow-up work. There's no homework for no. you. I mean, and honestly, you know, you could even take it a step further and say, I'll be here for two hours. You type, I'll talk. <laughs> you know? Oh, I like that. I mean, that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. And if they want an additional hour, then they, they pay an additional hour. Right, right, right. Okay. So on boots on the ground, when you're there, let's yes. talk about that because that is a good, the good positive lesson for us to hear. We've heard it a few times on the show, but every person has a spin on it. So do you, what what mechanism do you use to stay on time? So here are the top, couple of top view tips I'm looking for on this, Deb. How we come into the home and we have that right balance of being friendly and getting to know you and not telling stories about our dogs for 20 minutes while their clock is ticking. Okay, number one. So a little bit right. of tips on transitioning from sweet hello, blah, 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 to let's get to work. Um, yep. The other thing is when you know, what what is your thing? Do you give a Hey, a heads up at a half hour before the end, 15 minutes, 45. How do you alert them that I, this is two hours and it really won't be two and a half or three. And I, that's don't, cause you know, people will be like, well, she's still talking. I'm still talk. Right. So tell right, us right. a little bit no, about that. I mean, I, I could tell you two stories about that, but, um, what I generally do is we've had the phone conversation. So we, we have, have an initial phone conversation and sometimes it's through an email, but they, they will tell me what issues they want to address or mm -hmm. what rooms they want to look at. So I will get there. I have a, um, a folder that I give them that has a photo release form in it, which that could be a whole nother story in itself, mm. but that has a photo release form in it. Um, my package plan. So if they ask me additional questions about I don't want to do this. I don't want to go shopping for this. Can you do it for me? Then we we go over the packages. And so in that folder is the packages, the photo release form, and a just a, a blank example of what a design contract looks like. And that way they know that I can help them move forward with this. Love it. Do you do and, this um, before you do your consultation? Yeah. Do you, okay, so you walk yeah. in and you say hello. We get through the dog stuff, and then we start talking about, let me go through the things in my folder with you. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because obviously they've, they've already checked you out. They've checked out your website, but they may have read um, these packages online but until you actually get there and then you just really visually see what their house is sometimes sometimes the scope of the consult changes a bit mm -hmm. depending on what you see right what if what if your client is a, a hoarder right so you know um that, so what yeah. happens in is what i like about this is that you are setting up from the beginning the other, the, first of all, the expectations. You're saying that for, if somebody's coming for a, you, expecting you to come for a two hour consult and they are thinking they are leaving with that email ping and the to do list that they're going to do on their own, that's fine. But I like that even by putting the photo release in there and that you talk about it, I imagine, you know, tell me, but I, I imagine the language to be like, I understand you and I have agreed to do a two hour consult today, but if you happen to decide at any point, whether it's today or in the future, that you prefer me to, to, 
execute this project and do full design for you, I'll need the photo release. And that's why that's here. So it's not saying you need it, but it's saying here's another way to work with me without saying, do you want to do that? Is that is that what you're using it for a mechanism like that? Well, well, I just had an instance um, within the last month, and that's why I now am having my two-hour consults um, sign the photo release form. And I never did that before. I've always had them sign it if I'm knocking down walls or doing a project and take pictures. Right. Um, but now sometimes even at a consult, I'll go in and take some photos and put it in their Dropbox folder because every client gets a Dropbox um, folder made for them no matter what, when mm-hmm. I'm there. Mm-hmm. And so that way I can take their notes that I've typed up and throw them in there. And maybe two years from now, they say, do you remember blah, blah, oh, blah, and it's smart. there. But um, I, I do make them sign the photo release form now, no matter what, no, no matter what I I'm doing. So what you mean is it's not about using it as a potential teaser for a selling tool. It's because I'm going to take a picture of your home right now and I don't want any trouble from this in a week or a month or a year. Interesting. So it's not about the finished product necessarily. It's about covering it right here. Okay. And and, and I'll tell you that's um, Wendy and I are developing another um, ASID CEU and it's basically going to be on contracts and forms because it's and, and I'm I'm actually meeting with my professional lawyer I've met last week she's going over all my contracts and my photo release form because it's it's wise to be prepared before anything happens mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and okay. a scare can make you want to spend a little bit of money on your lawyer to right. make sure that doesn't happen okay so that is in my form okay so we're we're doing the photo release, you're going over the additional packages that are available. Is yeah. this from that standpoint that I expected the other? It's like today's two hours. Here's yeah. just a heads up of what else is available, especially if you push me past my two hours today. Here's the hourly of what it's going to be. Correct. That's inside voice, right? Outside voice is much different. <laughs> right. That right. is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool because if it gets to be – 15 minutes to the two hours, you're not standing there in that moment saying, well, another hour is this much money, or you could buy three more hours at a package. You've already explained what their options are. Correct. And and that comes even on the phone call because some people say, well, I know we wanted to look at this, but I really want to finish picking up paint color for, oh, my, my bathroom's getting remodeled next week and it's a small, tiny bathroom. Can we focus on that? Because I know we only have 15 minutes left. Some, a lot of the clients are aware. Other than that, I will say to them, if they, you know, want to look at something else or, you know, go into another room and start then and it's 15 minutes ahead. And I will say, I said, okay, so our two hours are almost up. Would you like to continue? And some people say, yes. I said, okay, so then the hourly rate kicks in. Now, I've had that happen. I was there at someone's house for four hours, and they just loved the whole way it was going. It was, um, instead of people downsizing at their age, they bought a huge house. I don't know why, but they did, Mm -hmm. and they wanted help with it. And it was going to be a two-hour consultation, and I said to them, we're you know, almost at the two hours and we haven't even gone upstairs yet. And they're like, no, we want to continue. We just want to get it all done. We love what we're hearing. So it ended up being four hours and they paid for it right then and there. And how, what is your hourly rate after the two hours? 285. 285. So that's more than 500. Yes. Okay. So they're getting a little bit of discount for buying the two on Correct. the beginning, but it's 285 each additional. Okay. I like that. That's awesome. Okay. And so again, you've explained it on the telephone before you've even come over. You've then re-explained it as you walk in the door. And this way at that 15 minute to the, the thing is over. There's no, well, I can't decide. They know exactly what they're deciding to. Exactly. Okay. And you do that about 15, 20 minutes. You call a little heads heads up on everybody. Yes. Okay. And then you leave them with the blank design contract. Do you actually go over it at this point, Debbie? Or do you just no. say, this? You're okay, it's there, you can look at it, but we don't need this now because you haven't contracted for this? Correct. And everyone's contract will be different depending on the job. But it's just a blank, just gives them a general idea of what's in the contract. Okay. Um. Any okay. other items in that folder between, but other than those three items? Um, no, I have the design packages, the photo release form, and a blank contract. Okay. If okay. they want to know more about my, you know, they don't need to know about my book um, because right. it's for the industry. And um, no, and you know, they can go to my website. My business. For- well, I'm sorry, my business card is in there with all my social media. Um, mm-hmm. 
icons and you know they can follow me if they want and um okay yeah yeah okay i love it okay so you have it's 500 now and that this is a recent change from for spring 2000 winter spring 2019 what was your two-hour consult before that 195 per hour 195 per hour so you would do just one hour and then yeah. when okay so it's not worth it anymore i don't want to, i'm not doing that so i do have a pick your brain segment okay and that is a um 30 minute online design consult so if someone you know i i did have someone from california call me and say they're moving back to the area can you you know can we have a phone call about my plans with the architect and i'm like i don't even know who you know i that's really difficult yeah. so i don't so i did put a price on you know on a 30 minute um online design consult or phone call. We do have a 15 minute discovery call too at no charge. So okay. those are the ones that come before the $500. I know I'm going backwards, but that's okay. No, but the thing is that, you know, as recently as five, six months ago, you had 195 for one hour and you jumped to 500 for yep. two hours. That was because of Fred. That's it. And I love that <laughs> because how many times was, were you able to get it done in one hour anyway? No. Right? And, and then, so now I'm, you're icky asking them for more money every time as opposed to sometimes. Yes. Right, right, right. It's true. So, yeah. I mean, because if you're there for an hour and a half, I would bill in, in half hour increments after the first hour. Right. You know, which I suppose is, is fair. But at this point, it's not as though I'm, I'm not a newbie. Um, I've been doing it for a long time and I do feel that my this is how I get paid right and if we don't value our services how are we going to be taken seriously you know at the I don't know 120 an hour rate if I and that which isn't bad but I think with all the knowledge and the packages and how they're laid out there's a package there for everyone. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I'm confident now that, and, and I'll tell you, I, I just got someone who signed up for my packages. He's a, you know, Dollar and I had this conversation about high end or luxury and who's the high end and who's the luxury. Well, you know, you might get a, a, a high end client who will pay for that package because they don't have the time. They're running their business. Right. Um, it's spelled out what they're getting and you're doing all the legwork. You know, you're doing the floor plans, you're dealing with the contractor, you're picking out the furniture, doing the mood boards. He's down in Florida and I did a presentation through FaceTime with him right. on, on right. his tile and all that right. kind of stuff. So it's, it's, there's a package there for that. Right. And there are people out there that want that. Right. I have to say, I say it a lot on the show, trying to give this perspective of the non-design professional that wants services and value, but doesn't want the full on experience. There's those of us out there like that, that I do, I don't want an uninformed, uneducated bargain when I do something, but I don't always want, and personally, mostly don't want the full on experience. So that means that it's, I guess it's hard sometimes for designers to grasp the concept that you could have a potential client that has the ability to make a design project very important to them if they choose to and really create a beautiful room with you. And in other words, what I mean is they have the financial ability to do it. But just because there's people out there that have the financial ability to do it, it's not valuable to everybody. And the reality is, is there is still the person out there that knows they want the educated opinion. And they know that even though they're not interested in a $80,000 living room or $150,000 living room, that they're probably still going to spend fifty. And they want to spend it well. In other words, they don't want to make mistakes, right? So you see what I'm saying? Like, it's not Absolutely. just Bob's Highway client or luxury client. Sometimes, to your point, somebody who could technically be 
toward the luxury end of the scale is doesn't value it and doesn't want it. But that doesn't mean we don't value your expertise. But I want to buy it in a clear, concise way. I don't want an open end experience. I don't want, I'm not getting in bed with you for the next two years and working this project with you. I'm saying to you, I have this one room. Okay, what do you think? Oh, I can buy 10 hours of your time? Let's buy 10 hours. Oh, at eight hours, we're not done? All right, fine. I'll finish it myself or I'll buy 10 more. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's just, we just, we don't understand your industry and it makes it very easy for us to enter your world if we can do it in a clear way. And that doesn't mean people like me wouldn't flip after three or four hours to full service luxury. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and, and to your point, Luann, that's exactly what my luxury, my, my high-end Florida client said to me on the phone call the other day. Mm. He said, how much is this going to call me, cost me? Because I've already paid, you know, 50% of what we contracted for. Is that going to include product? I said, absolutely not. Right. But he said, but I want it done right, Debbie. That's why I hired you and I trust you, but I don't want an open-ended. Right. I don't want it open-ended. I said, you, he said, what did I exactly pay for? <laughs> Obviously. And he's, you sound exactly. like me. Exactly. That's what I do. He's Wait like, a minute. What did I buy? <laughs> he's like, he's like, what did I pay for? I said, we are doing two rooms for you. We're doing the room that has been unfinished for a contractor because you can't make up your mind. <laughs> and we are doing the room adjacent to that. So everything flows and we're doing only furniture in that room. That's what you paid for. That's what I'm giving you. It's not going to cost you any more than what you contracted for. Right. Right. He said, fine. And then he put a number on what he wanted to spend for furnishings, right. which was perfect, which That's is perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what you said. He's a driver that- personality, just like me. Give me the rules. Let me see if I like them. Absolutely. If I want to change them, if I want to push you back or we're going to agree and then let's go. <laughs> yeah. He specifically said what you said. I don't want an open ended contract. Right, right, right. And said. the thing is, like I, like I, to my point is that he, this, these two rooms that he's doing for you, he's getting it done by a professional. He respects your expertise. He it respects that you know better than him. He wants it done. He wants a finite thing. But you know, who knows? I don't know if he's single. You know, it, but he could get married in three years and have you know. Oh, now we're going to do the house of our dreams Correct. and turn around and look at his wife and say, "This is the lady we're going to hire," and then get in full with you with the full service. You know, soup to nuts because he's had that ability to have that experience with you. And where this all started is, is if you only think of packages as a lower entry level to design price wise, then you miss the people like this gentleman and me at the top who still recognize the professional cost money. See, so if I look at your packages and I say this to the the baby designers that I coach all the time. If I look at your website and you're $65 an hour and I look at another website that's $245 an hour, I don't think, yay, I can save money. I think they probably don't know what they're doing. Exactly. You see, now that's me because I can afford the 245. But if I, if you are entry level and you are not confident yet and you are at the beginning of your career, that 65 or 85 is going to attract that client that you're ready and able to work with, right? You Correct. see, you grow with your clients, but exactly. Right. And right. you need that. You right. need you need you to start need to, somewhere yes. and then as you grow and get more experience and referrals because those people are going to refer you if right. you do a good job you have to start somewhere right but the thing is what here's where the disconnect is and i'm sure you'll you'll agree is once you've been doing your business for one year, two years, whatever three years at that 85 or 100 105 dollar mm-hmm. level what i hear is I can't raise my rates because every time I do, my clients balk. And what I'm always explaining is you're leaving those clients behind. Now raise to 175 and the people that were at 85, you're right, they cannot afford you. But the people who can afford at 175 weren't looking at you at 85. Now you're going to go and swim in a different pool. You have to have your chops. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have confidence. But you're not bringing them along with you. You're jumping to the next group, right? It's like I'm driving Hondas and then I'm driving whatever's Absolutely. next and then you're driving whatever's next. I mean, the Hondas right. are still there. There, but the people who are buying Maseratis aren't looking at them. 
That is absolutely Unless they're correct. looking at them for their kids or for their <laughs> extra vehicle at their third house in the, you know, beach or whatever they do. Exactly. <laughs> and that's Mr. That's Mr. Florida with his little Maserati. He's like, I'm not going to be able to buy that now if I hire you. Well, you can chuckle. But you're well, absolutely right. And that's the right. thing. We all have our value points, right? Because, like, I do. I've had, I have clients that their primary car at their primary residence is amazing. But then, you know, their vacation, they're not their vacation, but their second home, they're like, oh, yeah, at that house I have one of these and you know it's still a nice car but they're not necessarily with the the mercedes the beamer the maserati in every garage and so we all enter the market the same person enters the market looking for different things at different times gauging the value but there is a certain level of people that you will not even attract if your rates are too low. And so that is the challenge, right, Deb? Once you know you've got some chops and you've got some confidence to just push through and raise the rate because it will, the phone will still ring, correct? I, I totally agree with you, Luann. And, you know, it's, it's like the phone call the other day. Um, they knew who I was. They knew of my services. And when I went over packages with him on the phone, he said, okay, that's great. He's like, I will talk to my wife. And is there any wiggle room? I said, absolutely not. Right. I said, there is no wiggle room. I said, after 30 years, more than 30 years in this industry, um, I think you'll be happy with the product that you're getting for that price. Right. That's how I put it. And absolutely. no, I'm not going to wiggle and I'm not going to, you know, lower my rates at this point. Right. Right. Um, but then again, to your point, that might be not maybe a baby designer, but that might be the, the designer that's already up to rates once. Right. You know, right. and, and there, like you said, there is someone out there for everyone. Right. Right. And the thing is, you can't. You cannot bargain with the first conversation because now that just that just tells me every single I t- every time you give uh, me a price, I'm going to ask you for a lower one. Like, exactly. I'm just like, that's what I, I said, you know, and it doesn't mean that I won't ask you. I am that girl. They'll say, can we do this? Can we do that? I, if you say no, I'm good. I'm actually oh. a little kind of happy sometimes when you say no, because I feel like, okay, what if I didn't ask? You know what I mean? But <laughs> the simple fact is, is if you do that, then that person is going to ask you every time you give a price. So, oh, and it's, it. it's even your luxury client yeah. will do that to even you. more so because they're better oh, negotiators. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. and it's funny because when I teach the sales courses that I teach, I always say to them, you got to get your negotiation skills up because the higher you go on the food chain with your clients, the better they are at negotiating. You know, you, you think about a Wall Streeter. He's, oh. he's negotiating all day long, right? right so he's right. going to chop you up and dice you up. So you've got to get your negotiation and your sales, your sales uh, skills up as an interior designer. And it does grow along with your confidence. There's no question that it's a process. Right. Everything is a process, no matter what it is. It's just to always really, you've said it a few times, Debbie, and I appreciate that you said it, that you say to yourself and to your client, this is my body of experience. For you, it's 30 plus years. For somebody else, it's five. But that's a body of experience that needs to be valued. Of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. Yep. I mean, five years is, is a good amount of time. That's right. You know, and one not- year is a long time as a designer. What the thing oh, is, well, we, the mistakes. What are, right? Well, that's the thing. I was just going to say how many mistakes you make in the first oh. year of doing something. But guess what? That's five, 10 mistakes that you're not going to make the second year. And that gives you value and expertise above and beyond what your potential clients is. Yeah. So yeah, 10 Absolutely. mistakes is 10 learning lessons that are burned into your brain. <laughs> that is absolutely right. So don't try hanging a window treatment your first time out. No. Don't <laughs> even try measuring one. one. <laughs> oh, call your dad up who's an engineer. And say, dad, I don't know what the little line is between the half inch and, you know, <laughs> what? He's like, dad. <laughs> no, that, that, we won't go there. That would be a very long time. But, but you do. You make those mistakes and you learn from them. And that's part of being in business. Yes. Yes. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. And so the rest of your program, you're going to talk about the furniture industry furniture industry, and where it's going. I can't even open that can of worms now. That's two hours right now. There's no uh, way. Uh, we have time for that. Yes. Right? Um, and then um, setting up their vendor accounts and sources and things like that. And so that's a matter of really, you know, I'm assuming in that section there you're talking 
talking to them about not only setting up the accounts, but asking for meetings with their reps, whether it's a phone meeting, it's an in-person meeting, depending on the type of company it is and what their uh, yes. rep, right? But to make sure that there is a person associated with the name of your company. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I had a Schumacher rep called me today and I know Schumacher from being down at the Boston Design Center, but I didn't know know this, but she was the regional manager. Mm. And um, just before we had this phone call and yes, you want to know, she's like, I know your name and I've seen your face. And I'm like, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know who she is. <laughs> but, but it's very important to put yourself out there, um, go to showrooms or even go to your local um uh, vendors and mm -hmm. introduce yourself because right. what if it's a local, local flooring and tile place, right? And you have a project or, um, y you know, the more you buy from them, the, the kinder and the, the kinder they're going to be to you price wise, it'll be more flexible, but you need to get yourself out there, set up accounts with your, um, not only furn furniture and fabrics as well, but right. it's all part of networking as well. So we talk about that and how to do that. With yeah. the establishments. I think uh, that there is, you know, with all the different things that are happening with the industry and everything being computer and online and everything else, that that is something that, yes, you can open up an account online, you could put your credentials in and you can order online every single time, uh, whatever it is. Mostly I'm thinking of fabric companies and so forth, right? I'm sure with furniture, it's much more detailed and not necessarily entirely possible to do it that way. But the fact is, is that you get better service. Human beings give human beings better service. That's just what it is. And you're, there are always going to be times in business where you're going to need that favor. You're going to need, you know, the window treatment emergency. Oh, <laughs> that yes. That fabric emergency. You know what I mean? It's like right. I always laugh with my uh, vendors and stuff. I'm like, I know we're not like, you know, it's, you know, brain surgeons here, but I actually have a fabric emergency. It's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's coming. Those words are coming out of my mouth. I really do mean them, you know, because it does right. happen occasionally not to abuse it and not to be the kid that cried wolf. But when, you know, your back is against the wall, if they know you, they are much more likely to help you. And that's uh, the part of the human part of the business, and the connection that we have to be sure to not lose sight of as we go further into this online, right? I agree with you, and it's interesting because I listened to one of – I forget which podcast it was, and you mentioned that before about the reps and how important they they were. And and sometimes you lose sight of that, but it made me sit back and think, and I said, you know, for all the years that I've been doing this and making – I don't make window treatments anymore. There's no time to do that. Right. And, um, but the relationships that you make with your reps, you're absolutely right because if there's a defect, if the workroom finds there's a defect in the fabric, right, and you right. need that quickly and yep. – um, they're there for you or they'll come by my studio and bring samples or my JPR rub the other day says you need what what time is your she's like come to my garage they're all and she's say you know two town two towns over I'm like really right she's like yeah come to my garage you have to ride by the highway anyway I was like this is perfect yes, yes. so you know you need to know who your reps are in person and your local reps for certain things and uh, they will help you out because they value your relationship with them. And right. as much as there's online ordering, that there's nothing like having a person there that can hold your hand when you need it and can help you out. So I totally agree with you, Luann. Mm, yeah, definitely. And it's a small industry. You know, you find out as the years go by that a lot of reps, maybe they're not with Schumacher any longer. They're now with Kravit or they're, right. I just was at the IWCE recently, the International Window Covering Expo, yes. and it was awesome and it was amazing. Uh -huh. And I am walking by a booth and I look at the girl there. I'm like, Dawn and she's like Luann and you know she was my level or rep I want to say 25 years ago oh, and Lua. yeah I mean level or <laughs> is not even a business anymore right um but I just was like whoa and she's repped other companies through the years but here now she's living in Virginia Beach she's not in New Jersey any longer and she's repping a new company but that relationship is a hundred she's like oh my goodness because you look exactly the same I'm like so do you that's why I recognize you yeah. you know of course I did 
is don't a small, look exactly it's a small the same. business. <laughs> it, I mean, a small industry. Yes. Everyone knows, and no matter what coast you're on. Yeah, and that's why you got to do good, be good, um, and and because they will move around, and you know the goodwill goes around with them where at the places that they go and stuff. And so I just you know you can't lose the human touch of it is the point. So Agreed. yeah, mm-hmm. so amazing. And so you round this day out with the textile conversation, and then of course the resources, and then the vendor field trip. This sounds like an amazing opportunity. I think it's so smart of you, Debbie, to, you know, look, a lot of people ask us to do a lot of things. You should this. And then we say, yeah, I should. And then it doesn't happen. And you know, my favorite kind of person is the kind of person who takes action. So that's awesome for you. Thank you. Thanks yeah, and Rand. then tell us just do a couple minutes. We'll talk a couple minutes before I let you go about yep. the book. The book coming out um, in yep. the fall of 2019. This is geared more towards the design enthusiast who has not crossed over to professional career yet. Correct. Right? Because th- this will be um, monetizing your passion, turning your hobby into your design ho- your design hobby into a business is geared more towards helping uh, young professionals or even midlifers changing careers, right? Exactly, changing careers. And it will be on my classes page because that's where, you know, the five-day design, because it's kind of in that category. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where it will be posted. But it is for, you know, strong, hardworking um, people who do have a passion for always continuing to grow and move forward and following their dreams. Mm. And um, a lot of a lot of people have dreams of becoming an interior designer and think it's all glamorous, but it takes a lot of work. And mm-hmm. whether you're in interior design or the custom window treatment and in, in hard window treatment business or, or furniture, it's an ever-changing industry and it's sometimes hard to break into. And so what I did was I... Um, wanted this book to be intended to inspire and promote anyone who isn't considering the path and taking their passion and turning it into a successful business and the steps that need to be taken that should be taken or or my journey on how I did it and I loved every minute of it I, I I really did and then you look back and say people say you've done and accomplished so much and I don't because I'm still working really hard at it I don't look at myself like that I'm still working really hard at it Mm. and you have to love it yeah we're all a work in progress right I mean it doesn't matter if you're 30 years or five years there's something to learn I'm going to make a mistake today right it's I'm going to learn something today there's no question that's that's even what I put in the book through the trials and tribulations (laughs) and failures and feats you know right right Um, right we all have had them and uh through that there'll be an excellent outcome and and you know through positive energy I believe that uh, anyone can can achieve their goal and their dreams. I love it. And one of the things that you shared with me in our conversation before we started recording, I just want to um, give a minute for you to bring it out. I love that what you explained to me is that when you're some of your first jobs, when and what one of the piece of advice that you give enthusiasts, because I know we have enthusiasts listening to us as well, Debbie, and that are starting that whole side hustle career is that you express that a smart thing to do is that instead of just have like, instead of having your full-time job and instead of just trying to be a designer part-time and doing your friends and stuff like that, but is instead to spend some time in a part-time job in different sections of the industry. So working for a flooring store or working for a paint store or working for a furniture store so that, you know, I love this. I love this idea because I always say, I, 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 when I hire to work for me at window works, if I'm mm-hmm. hiring the position for selling window treatments, I will often put the ads out to the interior design schools here in New York city and New Jersey. And I don't say to them, you're going to come here and design and do floor plans, but you will come. And if you want to work for me for one to three or four or five years and learn window treatments, draperies, yardages, hard treatments, shutters, inside and out think about how valuable you will be when you then go to work for an interior design firm right yeah that's cool i I mean honestly i mean kimberly who works for me she is a degreed interior designer but 
she spent two years working at a flooring store just like you did. So, you know, we talk carpet with people, we talk hardwood with people, and we don't necessarily specify it, but you hear and see her knowledge and it's, uh, it's an asset. And so, and also too, the side benefit of that, Deb, is if you spend a year or two years working at a paint store and you learn the ins and outs of paint and they probably have wallpaper and things like that too, you're starting to meet consumers who are doing decorating projects. So it's sort Absolutely. of like a little pool of, of That's clients, right. right? That's right. Absolutely. You never stop networking. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely right. I mean, getting into the industry and getting some knowledge, again, even if it's, and I hate to say it, but you know, Pottery Barn or Home Goods or something, even right. just get out there. Yes, yeah, so if and, you're going to do something for six or eight hours a week and you want it to better and further your put your next career in design, those any kind of store experience like that is is always helpful, right? That's correct. And and even what I tell my students after the five days, so they, they get a certificate of completion and I say, okay, what's your business name going to be? And are you going to, what's the first thing you're going to do? They're like, oh my gosh, we have so much to do. We have to get a website. You know, I, I have to get business cards. I said, you know what? Don't be surprised if you're in home goods one day and you're, you, you're, pulling a whole carriage full of, you know, paintings and lamps and rugs and it's all color coordinated and someone comes up to you and says, are you a designer? <laughs> because they see that and it does happen. Right. And, and, and you might say, yeah, well, have your business card ready because you never know that could be your first client. Right, right. Exactly. You know, they might ask your opinion on something and, and don't be surprised to get those business cards out. But, right, right. Yeah. Or you could be like our friend Wendy Wallace Chuck in Home Goods or Target, wherever it was, <laughs> and somebody go, you're Wendy. You're the designer on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I did have that happen to me in a Christmas tree shop when I was staging. I was the first stager in my area back in 2003. And um, I had two carriages for, full of, it was just for a model home. You know, so yeah. there's some, some inexpensive things because a builder is always, you know, on a budget. So anyway, someone did come up to me and did say that. Aren't you Debbie Daly? You're that designer, that decorator. You stage the houses. I'm like, oh my god, this is kind of embarrassing. It was flattering, but embarrassing at the same time. But it's because you're so driven. And you're so excited about what you're doing. People do notice that. Yes, yes, yeah. No, I love it. I said, this is terrific, Debbie. I really appreciate it. I mean, you also, as I said, you are the in the, in the designer on call center at the Boston Design Center. And I definitely want to encourage people to go back and listen to that episode with Kristen, the director there, number 319, because that's an awesome program too. And um, it's, it's just a terrific way that I love the way the Boston Design Center allows the public in and sure. encourages them to be there, but also sort of gatekeeps so that the trade is protected and the trade showrooms are not just willy-nilly, you know, out there to the whole world. I mean, there is some things that we have to keep to ourselves, right? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that, that episode was great. She did a great job. Yeah. She's um, an awesome lady. Yeah. yeah she's an yeah, awesome so lady. It was um, a good one to listen to. Yes. Yeah. So. All righty. Well, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am uh, glad that we've met now in person and have had our podcast. We've been trying to do it for a couple of months now, but I do appreciate your spending your time here. And of course, it is, is it dailydesigns.com? Give us the yes. website again, dailydesigns.com, D-A-L-E-Y, designs.com. Thanks, Deb, so much. Thank you, Luann, for having me. It's been fun. So how about that conversation about her consult, right? Very good stuff, right? If you've struggled with handling or organizing your consult, I really think there were some terrific pointers in there. First was deciding on a set fee for two hours. And of course, I'm sure that 99% of you do do this and have it. But my question is, are you charging enough? I know you can raise your rates. No matter what your rate is right now, you can raise it. Promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Just do it, okay? The second tip I like was bringing a folder with her that included the photo release form, her blank contract, and a description of the different ways that you can work with her and how the pricing works. Her hourly packages, full service, whatever it is that you do, describe it, go over it at the beginning of the consult, and plant the seed of what it could be like to work with you after the consult, okay? Think about it this way. You're not being pushy. You're being helpful. Imagine 
you have a terrific experience. They really like you. They want to know more, but they're not sure how to ask. They're wondering if they ask and it's too expensive, if they'll feel awkward and embarrassed. So, you look, some people are always going to come right through the front door and ask you what they want to know. But you know that there are people out there that will feel intimidated and feel like, if they ask you, oh my goodness, is it always going to be, you know, they're thinking to themselves, is it going to be $500 every single time? Like, what are my options? Okay. So the thing is by you being the one to bring it up well before they even need to know, that's not being salesy. You're being helpful because at that point, you're just saying, I just want to share this information with you. These are the different ways that you could work with me if we find that when today's session is over, that you either have more to do or you'd like to continue working with me. I'm just letting you know what it looks like. Okay. And they're like, okay, fine, whatever. It's there. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. And then the other thing I really like that she does is that she makes her notes in real time. I love this one for exactly the same reason Debbie says she loves it, especially this is if especially if this is all she's ever going to do with a client or you're ever going to do with a client is the two hour you are in, you're out, the money has been paid and you're off to your next thing. Okay, so and if you're if if they end up hiring you for more, that's fine. But for those occasions when the consult is all they're ever going to need, you don't have homework. You don't have this big project to do afterwards. It's all done. Love it. Love it. Love it. So what she said is to have your document ready before you go with the client's name, the date and the address, any information you need. And then, as Debbie says, you just fill in the bullet points of your suggestions in real time as you go, noting the paint colors, et cetera, anything that you talked about. Okay. And I want to say to you, if you are looking for a way to add significant money to your bottom line for the last six or seven months of 2019, and you don't have a full pipeline of multi, you know, tens, thousands of dollars of worth of projects right now, how about if you just set a goal of trying to do two consults a week? Okay. If your consults are $500, that's $4,000 a month. That's $48,000 a year to your bottom line. I mean, really? (laughs) Now, even if you're only charging $250 for your initial consults, because maybe you don't quite have 30 years experience like Debbie Debbie does, that's $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year. And think, think about it. That's in addition to any full service projects that you might have have going on. That's in addition to any furniture sales that you might do or window treatment uh, sales that you might do. It's in addition to any packages that you might sell. I'm just saying it's pretty hard to argue with, right, to just add this one service to your repertoire so that you can significantly put some money on your bottom line, all right? So good stuff. If you want to know more about the two-day seminar that Debbie is running for designers, go to her website. It's Debbie Daily Designs. Now, she spells Debbie D-E-B-B-E, okay? So it's D-E-B-B-E-D-A-L-E-Y Designs. Dot com. All right. Debbie Daily Designs.com. And be sure to look for her book coming out this fall. All right. Now let's talk about sales and negotiation for a moment. All right. Are you, are you with me? I'm always getting requests to teach this. And of course I do teach sales classes regularly for exciting windows, which is directed specifically to the window treatment professional. And of course, I always teach um, at the IWCE each year, the International Window Covering Expo. I teach the three-hour super session, Master the Art of the High Ticket Sale. But what about other than that, right? How do you, how do you get in on this stuff, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. This fall, I will be doing a group coaching via Zoom, specifically on sales and negotiation, All right. There will be eight different topics and you will be able to find this information on my website. You can be there in real time with me or you can watch the replay later. Basically what it's going to do is I'm going to take a specific topic on sales, on negotiation. I'm going to talk about it for 30 or 40 minutes on the topic, teaching it to you. So it's almost, it's not almost, it is a class, okay, teaching you every single thing I know about that particular aspect of the sales process. And 
then you'll have a chance to ask me questions in real time. Okay. So um, each session is going to be an hour and 15 minutes and each session will be recorded. So if you're in a crazy time zone, you know, crazy different from me, maybe you're in Australia or you're in Europe or even you're just on the West Coast, um, you will get the Zoom recording of it. Okay. And we will also have a private Facebook group for anyone in this course for additional questions that you might have between sessions. Okay. Now, Let me tell you about the power of this. For one, you know I love sales. So there are topics that I know and I can talk about for days on end within the sales genre, all right? Second, the chance to ask how I do something, how to word something, what to say when you've tried it and it doesn't work. That's the thing. So you might learn something in a particular week and then have the opportunity to try it. And maybe you didn't feel confident in it. Maybe you did, it didn't work. It didn't happen the way uh, we talked that it could happen. And you're like, what went haywire. So you come back the following week and say, what the heck, man, Lou, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> okay. And then the other thing is that the really cool thing about this type of group coaching is the connection that you will make with each other. So I have run traditional masterminds the last couple of years. This is a twist on the mastermind. Okay. So the masterminds that I've been running have been for, um, not quite, not just baby designers, right? So there have been designers in there that have had two, three, four, five years experience, but it's basically been, it hasn't been designers um, with 10, 15 years experience. And so what's happened in these mastermind groups is they end up being like a think tank. We take a topic, something that somebody's struggling with, and we talk it around in a circle, right? And make sure we try and solve it. And we get opinions and stuff what everybody is doing to, um, you know, overcome this challenge. So this is not that. This is specific topic driven on sales and negotiation. But the part that is the same is that meeting of each other and that connection. Because I know from the last two years of doing masterminds that the designers that have taken part of these masterminds have become friends. And they still reach out to each other and ask for support and ask questions and ask for, you know, do you have an LOA that I could look at? Do you have a process for having trade day that I could look at? So there's different things. And these are the other intangible benefits. And then of course, you know what, I get to know you really well. And then we see each other at markets and it's like, you know, we're friends. I mean, that's the cool thing too. So, um, you know, I'm going to be setting up a landing page on my website for this. For now, please make sure you are on my email list so you know about it. That's 444-999. Text 444-999. Four 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 nine nine nine. Okay, you'll enter the word design biz, no caps, no spaces, D E S I G N B I Z, and that will take you to put you on the website. Quite frankly, by the time this show is aired, the, the landing page may be up, so you can go to luannigara.com and click, click on coaching to see. But um, definitely make sure you're on the email list because that is the one definite way to always know what's going on here and what I'm up to. All right? So I hope that you will think about joining me for this sales course. I will run it in the fall, so we've got plenty of time to um, get signed up and make sure you get your seat. All right? All righty. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Um, If you enjoyed Debbie's conversation, please reach out to her, let her know, thank her for her tips. And if you're interested in her uh, seminar or her upcoming book, be sure to follow her at Debbie Daily Designs. Okay. All right, guys, take some action, do something, decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.